And uh, how was, uh, we, we know we was uh, working with Thomas Kuhn, how was that experience for you? Well, that was, um, um, it, it, uh, I was quite afraid of that experience because uh, when I started working with Thomas Kuhn, I was um, completely unknown in philosophy, so... Um, uh, I had a PhD in theoretical physics and had worked uh, some years in philosophy, but had not published very much. Um, and Thomas Kuhn was just a world-famous person, and uh, so I came here. Thomas Kuhn was 24 years senior to me, uh, so he was comparatively older and, of course, established. Uh, and I came here with a scholarship, and uh, so there was quite a difference between the two of us. And uh, I was afraid that this difference may create difficulties also in our mutual conversation. But amazingly enough, that was not the case at all. Uh, and what I had not known at all was, and, and Kuhn told me later, uh, after a few months, that Kuhn did not have many possibilities and opportunities to discuss in detail his work with other philosophers. So I saw that Kuhn was pleased when I came, but did not really understand what was going on. And then later he told me that I'm the first philosopher who is in any real detail discussing his work. And perhaps I should uh, tell the anecdote um, how I came then to meet Thomas Kuhn, because I thought, well, Thomas Kuhn has so many contacts, and if I write him a letter, I want to write about your work, and then uh, I want to work with you, then Thomas Kuhn would say, well, I have 10 such offers or 20, and certainly I don't take this up to a completely unknown uh, guy. So I decided I must be special. And I decided then, uh, and it took me a few weeks of work, I write up uh, a bibliography of his work. Because uh, many of the people who wrote about Thomas Kuhn just referred to the structure of scientific revolutions and to nothing else, and they didn't even know that work very well. So I thought, if I have a chance, then I have a chance by showing Kuhn that I am much more serious than anyone else. Yeah. And that I showed by collecting uh, his bibliography, which was something like 60 items. Remember, this was the time before the internet, so I had to go to the library and went through dozens and, and many dozens of books, you know, to the uh, content, uh, tables of content of all the journals in history of science uh, in the period between 1950 and uh, 1984. So this was an immense work. But it did exactly the trick, because I sent it to, to Kuhn and said, um, uh, I didn't say I'm sending that in order to impress you. I, send it, 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 I sent it to him and said, please, can you check whether that's complete? <laughs> Very good. So that was my trick. And then my idea was, in that way, I can, I can show him that I really mean serious work with him. And because I knew that other people didn't do that, I thought I'm getting a comparative advantage. And that trick worked fantastically, even better than I had expected. Although it wasn't complete, there were, I think, two things missing, two pieces or three pieces missing. But more importantly, in my bibliography, there were reviews that Kuhn had written, but had forgotten about them. Yeah. <laughs> so he got my bibliography and enjoyed it, said, oh, it reminds me of certain pieces that I had forgotten. So the point was that um, um, by my preparations and also those things which were unknown to me, we had from the very beginning, in spite of that huge difference, we had a, a very serious relationship, a working relationship, and that means that I took him seriously is trivial, but he took me seriously as well. And then when he saw uh, the first pieces of my work, in which I was also extremely serious and extremely meticulous, because uh, I thought I want to change that way that Kuhn is read and is um, worked with, um, I want to do that in a much more scholarly way. And that impressed Kuhn much more than I had anticipated. So we had a fantastic basis of discussion 
And um, what was most amazing to me and also shows uh, the qualities, the intellectual and moral qualities of a man, um, we had sometimes discussions that uh, he said, um, yeah, but I've written this and that, and I meant it in this way. And then I said, no, Tom, you did not mean it in this way. You meant it differently. And then Kuhn said, okay. And then we went back to the texts and read the text as if it was the text of someone else. And just the two of us finding out what was in there. And as Kuhn writes also in the preface, that it was not, al it was not always Heuningen who changed his opinion about what I've written. <laughs> Meaning, of course, that, that he had to change uh, his opinion. And that was completely easy. We had never, ever any sort of uneasiness or fight or argument. We were just, you know, partners talking about that. And that he was the author of these texts was just unimportant. And uh, I must say, I admired uh, this quality of his that was completely without, you know, any fight between the two of us. It would have been easy for him to say, look, I'm the authority. I'm much older than you. I've got much experience. I've got much more experience than you. I've written these things. I know what's in them. Nothing of that sort. Complete neutrality. And that made working with him a real pleasure. Um, especially as in my book, um, I am fairly critical of several issues. Um, where I criticized Kuhn severely and said he's making really philosophical mistakes. It's not that easy for a young man to tell the old grand Thomas Kuhn, um, you know, well, you made philosophical mistakes. Uh, and, it, and Kuhn was very intelligent, very clever. He knew very well what he was doing. So uh, it was hard work to convince him. But I never experienced any sort of, you know, emotional resistance to that. It was, of course, he uh, often did not immediately understood, uh, understand what I meant. And then we had, of course, uh, long discourses. Uh, I remember one situation um, uh, that, that was a discussion we had uh, for three hours. Um, we had one discussion a week and that was a Friday. And uh, I had told my wife, uh, why don't you pick me up at five? Because uh, I have a discussion with Kuhn at two. And then you pick me up at five and then uh, we go out. So my wife came at five and um, we were still discussing. And then I was standing up, you know, trying to then finish the discussion. And Kuhn said, sit down. <laughs> And we continued, and my wife was then sitting next to us, and we continued for another two hours, two hours the discussion. Yeah. So it was for me. It was an, um, something that that uh, deeply impressed me about the intellectual quality of someone that, in discussing intellectual matters, only intellectual fact, uh, uh, intellectual fact, uh, factors mattered. So there was nothing, you know, of fight or defensive or so. It was just a discussion among people who want to find out the truth about something. And that was extremely rewarding. It was wonderful. It's, uh, he was a very intelligent, very clever man. Uh, and uh, of course, I learned uh, immensely uh, from these discussions. And as I said, we had uh, every week we had discussions. Uh, during that year I was at MIT and um, every week a few hours uh, this was just marvelous so uh, and he enjoyed it too um, uh, because uh, as I said what I hadn't known that uh, he had no longer continuous uh, discussions about his philosophical problems with other philosophers yeah.